Yo, what's up guys? Sorry for the hiatus. I uh, posted this video, the first one, round one, of Peterson versus uh, Spence. Um, while I was still on vacation, I was actually recovering from the flu the first time I had it still. And then as soon as I got back into San Diego, uh, where I live, um, I don't know, there's something wrong with my sinuses and like something in the air, like in my apartment. I don't know what happened and uh, just wrecked my throat and then I just got sick again, all over again. I even missed the first day of school. I've just been uh, super wrecked. Mm. But I appreciate everybody who's been responding, who's been in the comment section saying what's up, telling me what they think. <coughs> I got this guy uh, keep asking me about um, who's my pick for, um, and real quick before we get into the video, I'm gonna do rounds, um, I'm gonna do rounds two and three. And then we're going to kind of move on from this. You know, I could do one of the rounds later on in the fight when Errol Spence stops controlling Peterson. Um, and Peterson actually starts landing some bombs. You know, he lands some good punches. Um, but that's just to demonstrate that, that once you stop using those kinds of techniques, that uh, the controlling techniques, once you stop fainting, once you stop probing, uh, once you stop using those things to m make your opponent second guess what he's thinking, right to to control them right so if your opponent's trying to set up a jab right and every time they look like they're about to throw a jab you faint them and then they go oh you know you're controlling them right you're you're using what you're doing to make them uh sit in sit in their home guard right to, to stop them from setting up their punches you're controlling the space between you and your opponent so your opponent doesn't have the ability to do that but then as soon as you stop doing that and you give that real estate to your opponent or you stop setting your punches up and you stop you start allowing your opponent to figure out when it's safe to punch and when it's safe to to move in or when it's safe to do things and he's he has that knowledge because he's an experienced fighter the fight becomes much closer you know, and that's one of the, the really interesting things about boxing and why I talk about why it's so important to always be controlling your opponent, to always be fainting and probing and to understand how to control your opponent, not only from the outside and control the space between you and your opponent, but how to control them when you're out of position after you throw punches and stuff. Because as we saw, you know, Errol Spence took some big shots from, from Mr. Peterson. Uh, not many, right? Because <laughs> Spence had him, you know, kind of debilitated a little bit. But anyway, um, this is this is Errol Spence's breakout performance for me, and and I want to talk like just for a second. Um, if you watch Keith Thurman fight um, that dude Luis Colazo, and people sleep on Luis Colazo, man, that boy can fight. That boy is he's a he's a good fighter. Arguably was undefeated, became 140 pound champion when he fought Ricky Hatton. He beat Ricky Hatton, in my opinion. Um, I'd have to rewatch the fight, it's been a long time. But um, he got kind of robbed in that fight. He got robbed in the Birdo fight. He got, you know, like in all these close decisions. And you see fighters like um, Danny Garcia, right? Who are like top contenders, you know? Even though like all real boxing fans know that's bullshit, right? But Berto got a gift decision against him. Um, what's his name? Uh, Hatton got a gift decision against him. Um, Colazzo, and, and, and if, if it's not for those kinds of fights, right? Colazzo is just up there. You know, Colazzo's up there with those guys. He beat my boy Victor Ortiz, man. Victor Ortiz. I know nobody like Victor Ortiz, man. I love Victor Ortiz. But, um, uh, which, which was very shocking to me. I don't sleep on Luis Colazzo ever. But Victor Ortiz is, he hits harder than anybody I know. Uh, he's fast, he's got great technique, you know. Victor Ortiz is is, is everything that Errol Spence should have been without, without the control, right? Without learning how to feint and probe and to really set up their shots or anything. Before this fight, I saw Errol Spence basically as a super Victor Ortiz, you know. And... Um, this, in my opinion, is is Errol Spence's breakout performance. You know, he did some great stuff. <laughs> so here we got uh, him slipping the jab, and it looks like this is this is Peterson's whole game plan, right? So far, this is all he did in round one, right? He threw like three punches, and he's trying to get to the outside of um, 
Errol Spence's jab, right? And then immediately after that, Spence just takes a step back, boom, and shoves him back, right? Shoots a left hand at him, but controls him and moves off the angle too, right? He takes a step back as soon as Peterson starts coming in, right? Peterson does time that jab really well and get under it, and uh, he's able to push him off and get out of it. And then right back to business, you know, here comes that jab. And notice how he's not controlling it, or he's not, um, he's not committing to it, right? He's just able to shoot the jab, get Peterson to go to his high guard right there. And then as soon as those punches start coming, right, Errol Spence says, nah, st sticks his lead glove out there to control him and takes a step back, you know. Like, even when Peterson finds an opportunity to start setting up his shots by landing a jab, Errol Spence just takes a step back and he makes he's able to take that opportunity away from him. There you go. Showing that, uh, you know, controlling him, controlling him, that jab comes. But now he's learned that Peterson doesn't know how to follow up on the jab either, right? So he's kind of changing his game plan there and learning from, from um, Mr. Peterson. I don't know what happens here. Let's see. Times him right there, goes to the jab to the body. But boom, Errol Spence able to counter, right? I don't think it lands. I think it kind of sweeps over his head. But Peterson realizing, oh, even though I land that body shot, right, I'm still in danger, right? Because he's not controlling Errol Spence. Um, he's not really fainting or probing. He's just shooting the jab when he thinks that Errol Spence is not ready, right? And he's able to go to the body, land the shot. But when he's coming out, he's not protecting himself. He's not moving off the line. Um, and he realizes that even though that's a, f a source of offense for him, that's a way for him to score points, it's not safe. So he may not want to move back to that. But we'll see, we'll see. Controlling him, controlling him. And again, as soon as Peterson starts moving in, right? Peterson's like, man, I gotta get in there, I gotta find that body. Errol Spence's like, nah, bro, stay over there, man. Stay over there. Just controlling him right there. Jab to the head again. Let's see. Controlling him, shooting the jab at his hands, right? Peterson circling now, understanding, you know, Peterson circling out, understanding he doesn't want to stay in there on the line with um, Errol Spence. Ooh, and then again, Peterson does a good job of getting around the jab, right? He knows when it's coming, right? Now that's interesting, right? Because there's a few times that he's been able to do that, right? Let's look at Errol Spence's footwork. So, so right there in that instance, it looks like Errol Spence takes a step forward off of his normal walking rhythm, right? And that's when he shoots his jab, right? If we go back and we watch, um, now I'm not saying that this is constant, this is um, like always constant, because I know that he can just stand there, stand still, and then step with the jab, right? But off rhythm, right, it's very similar to what um, David Lemieux was doing against Golovkin. And we all saw how Golovkin absolutely smashed him. Then we saw we saw Canelo try to do a very similar thing to Golovkin, right? In the first three rounds where basically fought off of that rhythm. Um, oh, I know that rhythm's there. Then, oh, he knows that I know that rhythm's there. No, 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 no. I know that rhythm's there. Then Canelo was saying, okay, I know he knows about the rhythm, so I'll bait him off that rhythm. And then Canelo in the third round, or Golovkin in the third round saying, okay, I know that he knows that I know that rhythm's there, so I got to mix it up on him too. But it's interesting. So we'll see how much that affects um, um, Errol Spence's uh, punches, right? And just, just for like future film study, right? Um, because there's a guy that's been asking me, you know, who do I think is the better, is going to win in the in a fight, right? Um, Keith Thurman, oh, fuck, that's why I brought up Colazzo, right? Because Colazzo's no joke. Keith Thurman fought Colazzo. And um, um, although Colazzo hurt him to the body and almost got him out of there, right? Um, people are like, oh, Colazzo ain't shit. You know, he almost lost to Colazzo. Colazzo's a fucking good fighter, you guys. That guy's legit, man. And, um, <coughs> um, but Keith Thurman showed a lot of really high level skills in the beginning of that fight. A lot of good control, a lot of good fainting, like actually high level fainting, not just that bullshit he threw up on, um, Danny Garcia, right? But it's interesting because Colazzo is so short, 
right? Maybe that's why he feels comfortable doing that, right? Whereas Danny Garcia is much taller than he is. Maybe that's why he doesn't feel comfortable, right? But it's also that that whole left-handed, right-handed thing and how understanding how to control your opponent is so much more prevalent when you're fighting a, a left-handed fighter when you're an orthodox fighter than it is when you're fighting orthodox versus orthodox, right? And <coughs> that also might be the case with Mr. Spence right here, right? <coughs> fighting a right-handed fighter, right? But that is not the point, right? Because he's always going to be fighting right-handed fighters, basically, until he fights... Um, 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 what's his name? Who's that boy? Who's that boy? Crawford. Crawford, right? So it's interesting because there's going to be this, like, crazy, like, Fab Four kind of style of um, uh, fighters, right, in that division, right? And it's like, you know, maybe Fab Five or, like, Fab Fab Three, um, 3.1.1, you know, you've got... Um, uh, Danny Garcia, who's like, man, whatever, that you know, fuck that fool, he sucks. Um, and then one of my favorite fighters, although he didn't look great in his last fight, um, uh, Sean Porter. Sean Porter, who I'm a big fan of, um, and I like the way that he he fights on the inside. He gets a lot of shit for it, right? But having all these big names in the, um, in the division, in the welterweight division, makes that division hot. Mm. But anyway. Um, I'm kind of going to play some of the video, and until I see something really interesting, I'll kind of not really talk about it. That's really good, man. Boom, catch him with that shot, and then goes right back to it right here. Gets him to the high guard, body shot, and then shoves him off with the lead hand, right? And he's not even, like, super into it, right, with the shoving off. Like, he's not overly aggressive, right? But, um, but he does it just enough to figure out whether Peterson is going to be um, reacting, if he's going to be countering. Right, if he's going to be looking to fight on the inside, and he realizes as soon as he realizes he's not trying to fight on the inside like that, he just gives him a little bit of a push, right? <coughs> but anyway, it's interesting because before this fight, right, um, and um, I got a comment about it too um, uh, today. Uh, one of my one of my viewers, longtime viewer, was talking about how he doesn't see anything special in Spence when you watch the Brook Spence fight. Right? You just see a guy who runs in there and throws hard punches, right? He's got one set up, you know, or he's got, you know, the catch and counter, and then he's got the one set up, lead foot dominance, flash, flash, <coughs> left hand, but very, very straight up and down, as someone calls it. Um, but very simple, right? Not Nothing special, but everything he does, he does well, right? And then all of a sudden, right? If you're just watching the Brook fight, I'm just like, okay, so I give Keith Thurman probably like 55, 45%. You know, to, I give him 55, 45 to beat Spence, right? I think that if he can keep up the cardio, if he can keep moving away from Spence, keep him on the outside, and um, he's got decent counters, he's got great speed, decent uh, control game, right, against left handers. I think he's got a decent shot at beating Spence because Spence doesn't use, he doesn't move his head, you know. And for the most part, in the rest of this fight, that is kind of a little bit of a criticism I do get with him, right? So, like, now his head's kind of in one spot, right? He's not moving it, right? Kind of in the same spot. It's good that he's rolling it right there and then he comes in. <coughs> but not, not like an active guard, you know, but he's got an active enough lead hand that he's able to control Peterson, so it's not super important, right? <coughs> He's on like uh, on uh, like I'll say like level one for that control game, right? Controlling him, controlling him, right? Ooh, and this is exactly why you get that kind of um, <coughs> you get that kind of um, um, fuck. What was I gonna? What was I saying? Um, you give that kind of percentage to like Keith Thurman, right? He's fast, he hits hard, and when the motherfucker keeps their head on the line, they're not able to move their head off the line, um, and they're not, you know, active in their guard. Even if they are controlling you, eventually you're going to get timed and you need to switch it up a little bit, right? And now we'll see how, how Errol Spence reacts to that, to getting hit right there. Maybe he'll start timing him, right? He just wasn't ready for that counter. Um, maybe he'll start seeing that counter... <laughs> And shooting his own straight left hand over it, right? We'll see. We'll see. But 
because of stuff like that, not moving your head and not being super active in that and only using your lead hand, um, uh, you can kind of get countered sometimes, you know. Um, that's something that I think that Keith Thurman does pretty well from the fighting a southpaw. Um, uh, and before the Spence fight, or before the, the Peterson fight, I would have given Keith Thurman like a 55% chance of beating Errol Spence. You know, it would have been like real close. You know, um, on skills, I would have given it to, to um, <coughs> Keith Thurman. On toughness and shit, I would 100% give it to um, to Errol Spence. So depending on whether or not Keith Thurman can land enough clean shots early <coughs> and knock him out like um, like Kell Brook couldn't. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, unless he could do that like Kell Brook couldn't, um, Spence would probably beat him in the late rounds. But if Keith Thurman could hurt Spence... I would easily give the fight uh, in in Keith Thurman's um, favor, <clears throat> but after seeing this fight and after seeing where Errol Spence goes with the um, with the control and being able to control the lead hand <clears throat> and control uh, Peterson, change up his style of setting up his shots. Um, ooh, getting caught with another shot again. Because he keeps leaving his head there, right? Boop, boop. It's caught with another shot. Controls him again. Um, but until I saw this fight, um, I would have given, like I said, I would have given it to Keith Thurman. But I think that um, if Errol Spence uses these tactics against Keith Thurman, if he's able to, all right, that was nice. I like that a lot. Controls him. Peterson tries to work his way back inside. And then uh, he shoots that jab. And then he pivots around while controlling him with the lead hand again to take away all that momentum. Just look at how beautiful that is. Peterson's comes in. Errol Spence ducks his head this time to get away from the counter, right? Sticks his right hand out there and then controls Peterson and turns, moves him off the line and says, stop trying to set your punches up, boy. <coughs> Gives him a couple probing again. Probe, tucking that chin, changes level and shoot a body shot. <coughs> And again, right, look at how easy it is to control Peterson, right? Lead hand, and then now he doesn't want to shoot that lead hand. He's like, oh, he's waiting for that right hand. And all he does is change levels, right? And as soon as he changed levels, Peterson says, I don't know what's coming. <coughs> and he's able to control him and shoot that body shot right there. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm so sorry. But, um... I'm going to skip that part, whatever. But anyway, after seeing that, if Errol Spence uses these tactics against Keith Thurman, I think he's got a, he's got a great shot, probably 60-40 to beat Keith Thurman. Because Keith Thurman's so small. You know, I don't think he's big enough to fight with uh, Errol Spence. They might be the same size, huh, actually? Is, is he 5'10"? Errol Spence, is he 5'10"? And Keith Thurman 5'8"? I don't know. But to be honest, you, I don't think you can count Keith Thurman out it's tough because Keith Thurman can bang, you know, that guy can hit, and we haven't really seen whether or not, you know, we've seen Errol Spence take shots from um, uh, Kel Brook, right? Kel Brook's not the greatest puncher, he has pretty good technique, and he, he landed a lot of clean shots, that's for sure, but we don't really know, like, how hard he was hitting him, um, and, like, how much of his power he, he retained after coming down from middleweight. But, um, boom, great job right there again. Flashing the lead hand, just a setup. The two is a setup too. Boom, and then it goes to the body shot with the right hand. And I don't think that's something we've seen a lot of Errol Spence either, right? Usually he goes to the body with the left hand, right? And then comes up top with the right hand. So you gotta love that. Controlling him again, controlling him again. <laughs> Kind of work his way in there with that right hand or that left hand. Again, just simple setup, right? Shoot that left hand, get him going to the high guard, shoot a body shot. Maybe we'll only do one round, you know, because it, it, it is a lot of the same stuff. 
Oh, man. Got to love that right there, man. That was some really nice. Shoots that jab. He tries to... Uh, Peterson tries to parry it and move to the outside. And what does he do? He controls him a little bit and then takes an angle and moves off the line. And Peterson has to meet him on the line. And he kind of gets almost caught with that left hand. You know, and, and people see how easy this is, right? Like, this is the most amazing thing about it, right? Like, it's all the people that think that Peterson just laid down, right? Peterson fought hard, you know? Peterson's a smart guy. He's a good fighter. He just, he doesn't understand how powerful these techniques are, you know? And he has a lot of these tricks, too. But he'll use them. He'll, like, use a trick. He'll land a punch with it. And then he'll move on so that he's not predictable, right? He's like, oh, that part of the game is over, you know. Oh, the part about the game where I'm just tricky. You know, and he'll just move on. Whereas Errol Spence here, using that control, that lead hand control, da, 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 you know. He understands that that's going to be able to, to, to isolate his opponent from the fight, you know. And a lot of people who are like new to boxing especially and they see this kind of stuff, they just think that Peterson, I mean, he did just get outclassed, right? But they think that Peterson didn't even try because of the fact that he got dominated so thoroughly, right? And it's interesting because who do you have, have you ever seen Mayweather dominate like this? Canelo, I guess. Canelo, he dominated Canelo pretty well. But... There were so many times in the fight when he was fighting Canelo where you're just like, oh, Canelo might land a big shot right here. Oh, shit, Canelo might get him, you know? And you just didn't have that uncertainty against uh, Lamont Peterson for Errol Spence, right? Canelo's like a big fighter, right? But when you watch that fight, you never think that Mayweather's completely out of danger. And Errol Spence, you just knew that he wasn't in any danger throughout the course of nearly this whole fight, right? And, and the reason is, is because he didn't use all those kind of controls. He had a lot of tricks, right? He could time Canelo really well, and he did time him really well, but he, he, didn't, he didn't control Canelo, right? Canelo looked like he, had, he could do anything that he wanted in the ring, right? But as you can see here, <laughs> Peterson can't do anything, you know, as soon as he starts dipping to the outside. What does what is Errol Spence do? Oh, hey, stop that. Puts a glove in his face. Controls his lead hand. Right? Peterson just, he's not able to really do anything. He's not able to get any shots off. That's because he's being controlled. It's not about him being completely outclassed as an athlete. Right? But it's just this one little tactic to control Peterson that stops Peterson from having any kind of effective strategy in the fight. Oh, shit. I forgot to be looking at um, Errol Spence's lead leg. So step. Peterson takes a step back. That's interesting, right? So watch. As soon as uh, Errol Spence steps with his right leg, Peterson starts moving back, right? Expecting a shot. Steps forward. Steps forward. Glove comes out. Then another shot right there. Steps forward. Steps in another shot. So that's how, that is how Peterson's able to time Errol Spence, right? And that might be why Peterson is taking so many steps back and making Errol Spence come to him is because he knows that he, when he's standing in front of Errol Spence, Errol Spence is just controlling him, right? <clears throat> and because of the fact that Errol Spence isn't, isn't um, committing to any of those punches and committing to anything, um, it's hard for him to get a timing to set a counter up. Right? To walk Errol Spence into a shot. So he's trying to lead him back into one. Now, this is interesting because of the fact that this is how Terrence Crawford just knocked Julius Ndongo out. Right? And I talked about it in the lead up to that fight how Ndongo would step with his lead hand. Right? He would step with his lead hand and shoot his jab out. And he had a very similar Errol Spence strategy with stepping with the jab and then firing out that left hand. Um, probably only 10% of the technique that Errol Spence has, right? So that's not the point that I'm trying to make. But um, but the fact that he steps with the jab, or it's easy to time him, right? And then in the same video series, I showed Crawford catching 
uh, Felix Diaz doing the same thing, stepping with his shots and getting timed on the inside. In fact, that's how I predicted that um, Crawford would beat um, Indongo, and that's exactly how he did it. He knocked him out with that shot. Um, so that could be very interesting if those two fight, Crawford versus Errol Spence. Mm. In which case, if the fight... If the fight isn't decided on, decided by who's a bigger fighter, who's stronger, who can bully the other, right? And a lot of people think like, you know, Lomachenko versus um, Rigondo was was because he was a bigger fighter. Lomachenko didn't bully him. He didn't do none of that. He controlled him and then got on the inside and Rigondo didn't know what to do from that position except for a way for the referee to break him up or try to do something like an illegal position so that he could get the ref in there uh, and wound up just getting clowned on, you know? So as long as the fight isn't decided by who's bigger and stronger, uh, I actually give, I still give the, the nod to Crawford. I think that Crawford is just a little better. Um, he knows much more about this style of fighting. He knows much more about like control and and baiting and um, pr um, actually baiting your opponent into making mistakes. Um, as we've seen <coughs> um, uh, in this round, Peterson land a couple of right hands. Ooh, Peterson land a couple of right hands off of the control that that Errol Spence is. Um, exhibiting over him, it shows that while Errol Spence is doing a good job of controlling him, he doesn't understand all of the avenues of how effective it is. He doesn't understand um, all the ways that it opens up offense for him and he's able to counter, right? And he, it shows also that he probably isn't very good at just that style of countering either because if you, especially if you watch the way that he works on the mitts, um, it's very rhythm. It's very like da, 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 you know. Um, and I don't think he practices that kind of slipping and, and countering. Um, so I would give the I would give the the nod to um, to Mr. Crawford there. But watching this again, sorry guys, forgot what I was watching for a second. Shoots that shot. <clears throat> I'm not sure what he was expecting from. Um, from Peterson in this regard, right? But Peterson knows that that jab is coming off of that step, right? He goes to duck it. Maybe he thought that Peterson was gonna take that outside angle, right? But he comes in with that hook right there. Ooh, and then winds up getting caught with that right hand, right? Just showing you that, that you know, Errol Spence probably in this instance is just like waiting for Peterson to give up, right? He's He hasn't seen anything from Peterson. Peterson hasn't done shit. Right, so he's just kind of expecting Peterson to kind of roll over, right? That's kind of what I would think six minutes after a fight if a motherfucker only threw three punches at me too, right? But uh, Peterson's no dog, you know? Um, he's not gonna just like, well, he is a dog, but he's not a dog, you know? He, he's tough, you know, he wants to win, you know? And he's kind of trying to start to make, his, make some, um, some adjustments and kind of time uh, Errol Spence, his Errol Spence kind of gets a little lackadaisical. Again, interesting. Shoots that jab with a step, right? Step, and then he puts that lead hand out there. Steps again, just puts that lead hand out there. Did he do it there too? Boom. Step, and then that lead hand comes out. Yeah, that's interesting. I think that's definitely going to be something that uh, Keith Thurman and Terrence Crawford can both take advantage of. Um, that might be something he needs to work on is his movement, how he moves forward against his opponents so that he doesn't have to throw punches uh, when he's doing it. And um, he doesn't have to control them in, in that regard. And um, um, he can kind of... He can kind of, um, what do you say, uh, use head movement instead. You know, do something a little different than just throw punches, right? That was one of the criticisms that I had of um, that one boy, Shabransky versus Kovalev, right? 
Kovalev um, was very good at countering the lead hand. Um, of his opponents countering the jab, right? And Shabransky only had a jab to control his opponents, right? To control the space between them. So that might mean that right here in this instance, that Errol Spence needs to kind of figure something out um, in order to move up another level, right? In spite of the fact that I still think this was a fantastic performance from him and that he's really grown as a fighter. Um, anyway, we're going to play through these last 18 seconds. See if there's anything else interesting. <laughs> Another one of those little, um, he sees a punch coming, takes a step back, and then trying to come forward with another shot. Ooh, there you go. So he steps on that lead left leg, and then throws a right hand, or throws a straight left hand instead. I kind of like that, you know, kind of tricky, changing it up on him. It was a little off tempo because of the fact that you know, he's stepping off of it, but ooh. Let's see what goes on there. Places that lead hand. Peterson. Did he step with that jab too? Step. Step. Jab. Step. Step. Jab. So it's still on the same timing. But Errol Spence knows the timing too, and he's able to kind of take advantage of the fact that Peterson is taking advantage of him, you know, on that next level row right there. But uh, some interesting stuff, you know, and I'm really glad for, for Errol Spence for how much he's come, come along in just one fight. Because he really made this one look easy. He was, it, it never looked like he was really, you know, in danger of losing the fight at all. Uh, and he did a great job. <coughs> anyway, you know, a lot of this, this fight, you know, until you get to around like the fifth round or the sixth round or something... Um, it's kind of the same, so I don't want to spend too much time going over it or talking about other stuff on top of the video, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's like a lot of interesting stuff with um, Crawford and Keith Thurman uh, fighting Errol Spence, you know, and I kind of want to talk about some of that, but I'm thinking about doing like kind of a new series um, and maybe doing this once a week where I just go over like random boxing headlines and talk about what the headlines are, talk about what the articles are, and kind of just um, do some, like, boxing, um, I don't know, I guess I'd call it boxing bullshitting, you know, just talking about it, having fun with some of the articles, um, explaining what I see when I read that, what I think when I read that, um, especially, like, with all the talk about um, Keith Thurman ducking Errol Spence, right? Like, I don't think that that's fair to Keith Thurman. You know, he just had surgery. Of course, he needs to have a um, he needs to have a, a tune-up fight. He's been out of the ring for, like, a while, you know. Um, but then... Uh, but then he has his mandatories because he has two belts, right? He can't hold those belts hostage, right? He's got to do something. Uh, to, he's got to start um, defending those those mandatories, right? Fighting those mandatories. I just think the whole dynamic about ducking is kind of blown way out of proportion to... But anyway, uh, let me know if you guys are interested in that. Uh, it sounds kind of fun. Whether you guys are interested or not, I'll probably do it anyway. Because it does sound pretty damn fun. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks, guys.